What's going on, guys, and welcome back to another spoiler recap here at Big Gold Belt Media. Today, we are going to talk about the symp sympathizer that premiered mm. on HBO Max April 14th. Um, episode one was titled Death Wish. Um, these episodes are lasting about 56 minutes, and I believe it's a total of eight episodes in this entire season. Um, I'm super excited to talk about this one. Um, we have a couple stars that are actually, I guess you could say the stars of the show, or two main characters that are the stars of the show. Main of course, character. we have Robert Downey Jr., um, who's playing Claude on this show. And then we also have Hua Swande, uh, who is playing the captain. Man, we had to practice that before. That I didn't, It's not a usual name I get to say on here, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, crazy first episode. Damien, what did you think of this first episode, just to give us a little general idea so far? Okay, so first and foremost, I thought the captain was AI when I first saw him because that actor looked way too beautiful. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, hold up. Is this a real actor? Yeah. And then when we talked about uh, off air, Robert Downey Jr.'s makeup in the mm -hmm. first episode. Now, I know the hook is he's going to be playing multiple characters this season, different characters. So this one was Claude. Okay, so he right. looked like James Conn from Vegas, if you know who James right. Conn is. So I didn't like the makeup. You didn't like the makeup. It yeah, looked a little a weird. Uh, but if you've seen the movie Cloak and Dagger, like I was telling you, it's very espionage very hush-hush. I mm -hmm. mean, the whole premise is he's a double agent within the Vietnam Army. Yep. Uh, and, the, and the episode starts with him captured. So we got to figure out who captured him. Because he's narrating right. as to how this all happened. How did you get in league with the Americans? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my man is a POW, it seems, at this point, just to start within the first five minutes. And then, you know, you get a lot of backstory. And there was something that was very intriguing in the beginning. When he was talking about how he met the contact, right? right. The girl that they were torturing in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, when he couldn't remember what the movie was originally right that was playing in the in the theater mm -hmm. that's very espionage because right. you have to get your story really straight right. or else any holes could lead to death and we've seen it in, in things like tokyo vice where you got a hole in your story oh, you, that's a wrap you, for you that's it so that's it. i thought that was a very interesting way to introduce us to this world or at least this character and then we see in the movie theater, like, oh, okay, they're going to watch a film. All right. It's just a secret meeting place. Bro, they are torturing this girl for information yeah. on yeah. stage. Yeah. Wow. First 10 minutes. Here's a torture scene. Okay. Right. right. And, and just to go off what you said about um, the whole espionage part of him being in like this uh, P, uh, uh, POW camp. I thought it was crazy how we started off there right in yes. the first scene because i started watching it and i'm like all right did i am i on episode two what, what episode is this right now right i was like am i lost or, because he referred to the story he was writing or telling as okay i know in the first version i i said that um we were actually watching Emman, emmanuela right or emmanuel mm -hmm. was the story that he said emmanuel he, yes yes right I the, the, the movie he was watching but now he went back and he said no it was 1975. I was sitting in front of the cinema and we were actually watching Death Wish by Charles Bronson, who's Bronson. starring in that film. And it's crazy because you see these huge posters of these characters kind of one Emmanuel coming in and he's like, oh, wait, it's wrong. And then here comes Charles Bronson <laughs> hand back into the camera. And I'm like, oh, man. And I thought, like, man, is that part of him being tortured, not, you know, having not knowing any information and like right. maybe not knowing what timeline or what part of his life he's in right now. So he's trying to recollect and really figure it out, but he's kind of messed up in the brain or it could, because when you're an espionage, you lie so much, it's kind of hard to figure out what the truth is probably at the end of the day for your own self, you know? Um, Cause you tell one lie, they always say you tell one lie, you got to tell a hundred more, right. To cover up that one. And it probably that's, why he's so confused in this first scene um but yeah i mean we get to dive in and we kind of get to see uh and learn about this character called the captain right and he's obviously part of the police force that is in um i think it's a uh, Sa saigon uh in saigon. south mm -hmm. vietnam and 
there's immediately anonymous tip that comes into him um, from one of the other police officers saying that, hey, this wiretap finally picked up on something. And he seems super, super hesitant, right? And he's like, okay, get the car. Let's go investigate. Knowing mm -hmm. deep down he might be busted, right? So something's going on here. We know that something's up because he seems too hesitant because they're talking about, I guess, passing it upstairs, meaning to his mm -hmm. boss, who to we know boss. now was a general. And he's like, you know what? Let's check it out ourselves first. Well, with all these other people involved in it now and they're all in the car, I mean, what can you do, right? You got to sit here okay. and follow through because if not, your cover is going to be compromised. Um, walk. Can you walk us through a little bit on that scene where you got to see the girl that was actually picking up before we got to see her torture, uh, torture? Yeah, interrogated as the as the like they like to call it the um center stage, right? Center stage on this uh in, in her. They called her a diva. Play. They wanted her to act like a diva. Yeah, while being yes. interrogated. Yeah, that was it. Was it was crazy. Um, so for me, yeah. so right. the setup of it all was, okay, here's this like young girl, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to fight for her country in her own way. Right. Uh, and, and it's just kind of the, the mailbox is being used as some drop off point of vital information. Uh, and apparently th this woman gets caught, right? They, they yeah. catch her. And before they take her to the theater, they see the captain and obviously the captain, again, he has these piercing eyes where you just think he's not real, but right. she recognizes him and he recognizes her. So yeah. to your point, oh crap, someone's cover is going to be busted. Shit. It's episode one is about to go down. When she whispers in their native tongue, mm -hmm. you know, like hit me, beat me up. Like she's telling him, like, yeah. I know who yeah. you are. Right. Like. I'm taking a dive. Like, yeah, like I, I think her good. actual words that she said was she was like, um, she was like, hit me, comrade. Yeah, and I guess comrade, like, based yeah. on, you know, uh, them being communists, he was like, oh, no. So she <laughs> oh, knows. no, I messed up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, crazy. And then he, she spits in his face and he tells peace in a story. He's saying, well, her insult wasn't that original. I've been spat yeah. in the face numerous times. Yeah. What I got from it was, oh, now he really has to be careful because somebody, because at the time, I don't know what's really going on in the show yet. Right, right. I'm thinking this girl's going to rat him out when she gets to center stage, right? right. When American, the Americans start torturing her because did she or did she not swallow the vital information and yeah. they tried to pry her mouth open with like the tongs of life on her tongue? Yeah. Did she take a chunk of, a chunk of her tongue out when she swallowed it was, that? Um, it looked like so it. What they were putting in her mouth was a pocket knife, and yeah. they were yeah, I know that. I was like, yeah. ah, no. So they, they were twisting it, and she wouldn't open oh, her really? mouth up, and it like cut the side of her tongue, up. and she was oh, trying to dude. show like she was showing her tongue like so you know, and I'm like, oh, Ew. um, so yeah, it was crazy. And then of course she bit his finger, uh, the captain's finger, trying to. Um, as he was trying to force the, uh, I believe it was a film container mm -hmm. um, out of her mouth. But I think the next scene we end up like cutting to her being at the CIA safe house since they yes. have captured her now. And for me, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, man, this girl is like willing to kind of, I guess, sacrifice everything for the cause. Right. But it's like, man, does she have a plan to get out of this? There is no plan to get out of this. Like <laughs> there's no way she's going to escape. So she, they have, five men along with the captain and claude all in this um looks like a padded white room right um yeah. almost like a psych ward room and she's sitting on a trash can and i guess they must have given her some type of laxative or something yeah because like she's like sitting there sweating crying and it's like oh man you must have ate the um what is the uh oh my gosh but the metabolism uh what's it called that make you like it's like clear it's the craziest stuff. It makes you go to the bathroom all day. So don't take it. Um, if oh, you ever no, get it. We're not doing um, it. so she like takes she's like sitting there on the toilet, and you can see her, she's like about to break. She's on the bucket. Sweat. She's literally on the shitting bucket. on the, bucket. the toilet. Yeah. In the middle of a room with all these guys there. And Robert Downey Jr.'s character is so aggressive. He's loving it. The captain. He's like, This is it. You gotta get in there. You gotta interrogate her a little bit. You want to get wet? It's wet down here. This is this quote. Literally, and I'm like, wet. ew, what's that mean? Like, I don't <laughs> I don't like how you <laughs> You just saying the word wet, like with all these people in the room, it's kind of strange. She on the toilet. I mean, she on the trash can pooping. It's 
kind of weird. Um, it kind of threw me off, but eventually she just can't hold it anymore, and it just it comes right all out. comes out. They eventually get the um the the photos, and then we kind of pan back to her being tortured more, and them kind of because the interrogation when we saw her in the theater wasn't very brutal, right? There wasn't a lot of I thought we were gonna really see some like nitty gritty war tactic type torture type things in this show like but they kept some it toes kinda, off yeah yeah and they kept it pretty um i don't want to say Same. pg it was like pg-13 you know very very uh relaxed even though this is rated mature at the end of the day um but yeah we, we get to see that and then we end up we do like a time jump i think to 40 hours before mm -hmm. and if you want to walk them through that in 40 hours before we get to see what the captain is doing if you want to walk them through what we see on that part is this the part where he's looking for the the information? Yeah, for the, yeah the list. Yeah. Okay, yep. so the captain has been okay. A little bit more backstory, guys. So mm -hmm. the captain's got some friends, right? He's got his homies that he's he's hanging with, his family, because he talks about before he got into this life, you know, he missed time with his family, mm -hmm. which is his brother and well, his blood brothers at this point, right. uh, Bon and Mon. So Bon is the family mm -hmm. man who just right. had a kid who's, I think the kid's first word might have been avocado. I think his name was Duck. What was his name Duck? <laughs> yeah, the kid's name is Duck. Yeah. yeah I was like, oh. And then, right. and then there's Mon. So Bon mm -hmm. and Mon. And Mon is the handler for the, I want to say what, the Vietnam North Communist yeah. branch. Yes. Uh, so he's the one giving him orders. So he's telling him he needs, to, Mon is telling him, he has to get what's it called uh this list of of vips as we find right. out later what this vip list is it's basically a list of preferred people who are under like let's, let's say protection or you know it's just a, a vip list and it, it might expose some people if right. this list is found so again very espionagey but i love the way he he goes to get this list he's trying to find it right so mm. to get access to the general's office, because we find out later, he's basically the general's errand boy. Yeah. Whatever the general <laughs> wants, he does. So he's yeah. like his driver. Yep. He teaches him English. Just, just his, his little boy kind of thing. His young yep. boy. Yep. But he's taught the, 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 the captain is talking to the receptionist at the desk saying, hey, you know, he's telling me to go get this. I need to get find this list. Can you tell where this list is? Oh, the general has that already. Oh, that's right. That's right. So he goes in, comes back out. You know, he doesn't know where he left it. Can you let me know where it is? Yeah, like, I know. That was kind again, of Again, <laughs> real, real coke and daggery stuff. Yeah, and I'm thinking, required. see, we, you said it earlier. You say one lie, you got a thousand more yep. ready to back that one yep. lie up. Yep. And eventually he finds out the, the list is on the bottom drawer and he tries to get it out. And it's locked. And he realizes he can't get it out in that moment at first. Right. So it's almost like abort mission. We right. find out later he get he winds up getting it, but not in the way that he was trying to sneak around. And I'm not gonna lie, I think I might be shell shocked from Tokyo Vice from uh, Tokyo Vice, but yeah. I thought somebody was gonna get got in that moment. He oh, was gonna yeah. get caught. Same, like I'm same. on my on pins and needles thinking same, he is yeah. going to get caught. And no, he just goes to the car, drives the general, being a little errand boy. We gotta go meet with the Americans, you know, have these meetings. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get caught, but he didn't get the list either. So right. what's going to happen? Then we find out later what really happens. Right. Right. And, and it's crazy how he was able to kind of find the key in that little short period of time. He would like walked out with the general to the car and they're like, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and oh, head out. Go get this. Yeah. Since he is his driver. And he's like, hurry up. We got to leave. He's like, ah, I forgot something that might help you talk to the other Americans and make you look very, very smart. So in he English. runs back. Mm -hmm. finds the key he like prays to the mother uh, i think i would say the general's mother's uh like shrine that's in his office mm -hmm. and he gets the key there opens up the, uh, the desk and takes his little spy uh camera and takes pictures of all the stuff and come to find out this whole time he's the guy that sent the list to the girl that's sitting here yep. being tortured yes and he was i'm like this is so crazy like how i mean that little maybe 10 minutes of the show formulated into this huge catastrophe i would say yeah. oh, i would call it a catastrophe because she got caught and obviously she's gonna be dead probably in the next 20 minutes 
And I guess we get to pan back and we get to see what's happening more in this torture scene. Um, like I said, they're really just questioning her at this point. She's already kind of beaten, bruised, and she she's not giving the them end. anything. Right. At this point. She already she's not gonna get anything from them. And I think they know that. So they're like, you know what? It's over. So the she last time they the ask her, where is the list or where'd you get this list from? And who was your contact? And she stares right at the captain um, and the captain is sitting there smoking a cigarette nervously and i could have sworn it was a tear coming down he was eye. crying he was, he was crying, crying right okay i was just making sure it wasn't like the glare from a hot room with no ac or something like now, that I'm, i was like he cried man was crying i was like you better not let claude see that because claude is gonna be like hey, hey you have to solve his son um <laughs> but see i have the opposite thought process thought mm -hmm. process i would have thought if claude saw him crying because before that when we pan to the the flashback about torturing her on the on the bucket, you got to get in there, right? You got to be yeah. in it. You got to feel it. Like this was him being in it. Like right, if yeah. Claude, I as someone viewing it, I wouldn't have thought he was crying because a a comrade is going to be killed or hurt. Right. It's because he's in it. And right. like if Claude would have saw it, like yeah, we got him. He's one of ours now. He's like he's in it. So guy. it might have been again. Maybe I'm just thinking a little too deep into it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm watching it as a viewer. I would have thought, okay, that's when Claude trusted the captain in right. that moment. Right. Because yeah, he which, pretty which much gave that. her up almost, you know? Right. He was yeah, enjoying yeah. it. It was cinema. Right. right. He was like, man, what? A yeah, you know what? It does make sense now. It's almost like he was crying like, oh, man, this is a beautiful movie. You know, we are getting back at these people. And we're finally going to take over. Like, my, I'm so yes. proud of what we're doing here. Um, which is America. sick, kind of. <laughs> God bless. Um, so... <laughs> At this point, they do ask her a final time, you know, who's your contact? And she looks straight at the captain and says, Vietnam, right? And I'm like, oh, there you go. That's, oh, that's not the answer they wanted. Uh, you might have messed up. So that is the last we see of her. Um, there is a huge bright flash that kind of pans into um, going forward about two months from now on the show. And at this point, the uh the was it a uh, Sa saigon saigon uh city saigon. is actually being attacked now um by the north and the war has basically went from being in the north in the jungle to moving down to saigon and now they're going to take over this city at this in point. the streets right in the mm -hmm. streets yeah so um there's curfew being let out now and we just see the general at home right the general is at Chilling. home and by, and by the way the Aaron boy the captain or his his i guess laggy um he lives with him yeah. so he lives in this old colonial mansion so he's still able to do his espionage stuff in his own section of the house because it gives him just enough space where he can still kind of operate work. and do his own thing yeah his, his work but still not be interrupted by the captain until we see a little later so they're basically in um the colonial home and they're watching the news and the captain is you can tell he's frantic at this point he's like yo I got to leave the city. I got to get out of here. You know, we, we, we came together with the Americans, so we need them to help us get out of here. Yep. And here comes Claude. Did you think Claude was going to have better news than what he presented them with or no, because, because that's the, that's the caricature that he was portraying, you know, yeah. gave him this whole that's, but okay. Let me take a half step back. Go ahead. When we're talking about this show already, what did I say during Tokyo Vice? Trust no one. It doesn't yeah. seem like anyone's a good guy here. Mm -hmm. I'm getting similar vibes where nobody in this story seems like a good guy. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. all just people trying to get theirs, get over on somebody else. So Claude coming over to the house, you know, trying to bargain with mm -hmm. the general. The general's trying to bargain with Claude, with Claude. And the general is asking the captain, like, what he say? You know, like things like that. And they're yeah. talking shit yeah. about Claude. And he's like, no, I need two planes to get my people out before sundown or something like that. And yeah. what got me was the general wants to so much be down with the Americans, right? Like right. We, and we talk about this in other shows, like the Gaijins, right? They, or the, the sellouts, right? right? Like right. you're selling out your people. You want to be just like America. Because we find out the captain, when he went to college in America... They reference the fact that, oh, yo, you fell in love with America too. So don't yeah. act like that's, you know, that's just the general. 
right. that was you too. He goes, well, I was young, bro. You right. graduated like two years ago. What you talking about? Like right. I was young. I was blinded by mm -hmm. America. And, and, you know, a lot of people can understand that the allure right. of, of freedom, America, even in the seventies would have been a big deal to somebody from Vietnam. Right. to be able to live that lifestyle, you know, as a baller, because you're a general and your wife's used to nice things. And so they're trying to bargain with Claude, getting a, the, the, the list people out of there. Mm -hmm. um, and happening, which cracked me up. First off, Claude gave some cheap ass whiskey or whatever it was. It was so, Jack Daniels. He gave him Jack Daniels. Yeah, right yeah, see, yeah. that's why I don't drink it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't drink that at all. Right but, here, headache. <sighs> That is what cemented that nobody in this show was good because yeah. they're both trying to make deals. The right. general with Claude, Claude with the general, the captain's trying to screw everybody else over. And it seems the only friends he has on the, I guess, the, the Americans side is the general's daughter, which we, yeah. you know, apparently he has a thing with the general's daughter or something like that, or like right. they have a, like, a little flirty relationship and his boys, right? He's got his right. boys. He's got Mon and Bond. And the one request the captain makes is I need Bond and his family on this plane. Right. He right. wants them to live a better life outside of war torn Saigon, which right. that's, that's, a, that's a bro right there, man. That is right. a bro move right. to say, nah, because we find out later that the captain never wanted to leave Vietnam either. Yeah. He no. wanted to stay with Mon because he told Mon, are you going to go? No, you yeah. got to go. Because right. Ron's telling him he's got to go right, to make sure the general, what do you say? He says, he, we're winning, but we haven't won yet. Right. Keep tabs on him this, for the, for the right. rest of the war, you know? Um, so I think that's part of the reason why the captain wanted Bond and his family to go, because at least he has a slice of home. But also Bond's an innocent in all this. He, he's, they even mentioned he's not down with the cause. He's just him. Yeah. He's it, just him. He he has no idea that his blood no brother is even a part of this, which is I think is so crazy. I mean, I guess with you know his life of having a wife and kid now, as well as work and being in the military, he really don't have time to be checking up on nobody else. So whatever they do and whatever lies they tell him to get away, sometimes mm -hmm. he's well, not gonna go to church. He's not like oh, let me make sure they they really doing what they say they doing. You know, like he ain't got time for that, which makes sense. Um. There, yeah, but there's there's so much to unpack. And I think, honestly, the captain is a lot smarter than the show actually gives him credit for. Because he, when, when he was able to ask for safe passage for Bond yes. and his family, he noticed something about the general who was slightly drunk when he walked in his room, right? He right. noticed that his toes were missing, right, out of his shoe. And he mm -hmm. usually doesn't show anyone his, his, his wounds on his feet because, obviously, he's probably self-conscious about it or you know doesn't want to seem weak because you know missing a limb or something like that probably maybe in the culture symbolizes hey weakness because you're not whole right right so for him he saw that as not just a point of weakness but a point of sympathy as well saying that mm -hmm. you know what which is part of the sympathizer in the name yeah, as well there it is. You know, he's like he sees sympathy in certain situations where he can ask for something that most likely he probably wouldn't get if there this wasn't the situation going on. Um, but what what a clutch time to ask for his friend um or his blood brother and their family, you know, to start a new life in the United States and probably have a better opportunity, especially with this new list that's coming out. And I thought it was very, very it was hard not to understand, but it was hard to see that the girl that the communist girl she died probably for nothing to be honest with you because for that nothing. list he was forcibly trying to get and she got caught up with later on the general just gives it to him just give him the just list hands it to him just hands it to him like hey yeah i need you to scratch off some people on here because everybody can't go my he's man like, delegated he's like, and oh, just gave man. the list to the captain yeah and he's like man i could have just waited and probably got this and she could have saved still be alive right now but it didn't happen that way, and <laughs> he got the list, and then he started crossing off people. But I think the thing that, like you, like we said, that he's a lot well, he's a lot more intelligent than we think because when he went through this list, he didn't want to put everybody that's competent on the general side, right? He wanted to have a couple people that were 
incompetent but seem competent at the same time because that way if he ends up going with them or if he's here then the general really won't have his best circle around him and he'll be kind Correct. of vulnerable at some point so that way you know the north can still kind of try to take over and still you know you guys make some type of military tactic from afar and still win um but yeah and they, i mean at this point they're kind of i mean the captain is basically in his feelings saying you know i'm not gonna leave so he wants to hang out with a couple of his buddies they're drinking at a open bar spot uh i guess like on a patio porch amazing by the way i thought oh, that was yeah. hilarious whole bunch yeah. of budweiser and a whole bunch of smoke. so much but i'm like man this is very american of you guys <laughs> but what's there outside <laughs> just on a patio um but yeah they're going through the beers and you i mean you hear one blast go off right because obviously the north is coming they're coming down yeah. uh to saigon to take over and you hear a blast and i think one of the gentlemen says yeah that blast is about 250 km kilometers away not sure how he knew that I have no idea how he was able to get that schematic or just in well that hand. was that wasn't that mon his you know the guy the handler so he would yeah. he has military training so he would know that yeah that does make sense though yeah that probably makes sense probably and that's why he's able to fight so well because we see them in here fight. they're in here they're listening to music you know and the blast goes off again and this is going yeah. into the wee hours of the night and you hear another blast and now the table shaking they're like oh that's it's getting a little close now like what's going on you know, and I think everybody kind of in the city has kind of consumed their fate because not everybody can escape to the U.S. Not everybody can run away from the situation. Some people are going to get interrogated, tortured, and probably killed because of the, you know, the part that they played in this whole entire uh, significance of the war. So they've kind of like accepted most of their fates. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe it was Mon and him are having a conversation because yes. uh, Bond gets into a fight with... Bond was drunk. They're they're all well, yes. Bond is drunk, but the other two are not. And mm -hmm. it's funny because it's like, did Bond drink all these beers stacked up? Because <laughs> you know, I mean, we see them drink, but maybe they weren't drinking as fast as he was. He's just throwing them back, you know, thinking like, oh man, tomorrow who knows what's going to happen. And he gets into a fight with other fellow soldiers that he sees because they make a comment about the music um, of one of the performers that was playing. I think it was like a peace song. So they make like some stupid comment and. Bond gets up and starts fighting three soldiers. And it's so weird because we're watching this conversation and I'm like, yo, is a karate scene just happening? Just in the martial arts moves. I'm like, what happened? He, he kicked the dude straight in the air in his face. Like, I was like, did his leg go straight up? Like a and he just dragon grabbed that guy in the nose. I was like, wow, uh -huh. that's that's impressive. Like, yeah, he's drunk. So, <laughs> so and then all of a sudden um the captain and uh mon start having a serious conversation yeah so then we kind of figure out like okay they're not drunk they were just playing drunk so i guess they get this opportunity to have a serious conversation about it and uh the captain is kind of he's kind of relinquishing his thoughts about america and kind of excited that he's staying here right he yeah. gets to be home or what he thinks he's calling home deep down right because um, they think both because think they're going to be safe once right exactly because they're like happens. our people are coming down you know yeah. we're gonna be good they're never gonna find out about us we're straight and come to find out there are other plans the higher power that is in charge of this whole entire takeover i guess that were that mon reports to mm -hmm. is basically saying that you know what you're not staying here you're captain you are way too important you're going back to america baby that's it Going to America. You get to go see the Isley Brothers tonight. Have a <laughs> great time. <laughs> and I, I thought that one scene where Robert Downey Jr. as uh, Claude was talking about like, yeah, um, you got to have a little funk, right? I love the Isley Brothers. They're really good. You know, I'm 1 16th black. It's, <laughs> what was it? Tropic Thunder? Wait, what? Yeah, that's, that's as much as it's going to get. Um, and then the general's like, man, these Ivy League brats always think they're Negro. <laughs> Something like that. That was a like, wild yeah, line. I'm glad you referenced line. it because that was wild. I'm like, wait a minute, like, what? Huh? I was like, huh. I was like, oh, this, this is getting a little, uh, a little, a little spicy in here right now. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, I so that scene closes out, and I, I, I can't tell honestly. I think Bond won the fight. <laughs> yeah, oh, he definitely Bond won the fight. fight. I mean, three on one, and he's still standing. Then I'm, I'm gonna say he won, unless they all passed out and fell asleep in the back. But um, I think it's crazy because when he gets the news. From Mon, the captain. I can't tell if he's really excited 
or relieved kind of deep down because it, I don't think he's it seems like a little mix of emotions because he's like takes a deep breath but at the same time he's kind of like I want to stay home but we still have that question like is this truly your home you know like you're one of the best English speaking people that are here you know you went to school back home you know you grew up most of your teenage years was in America yeah. so you you've accepted the idealism of what America is even though you don't want to admit it, to be honest with you. And I feel like he has to come to terms with himself about really, I I just dealistically, you know, really what he really wants and what he really feels about the country. Um, okay. So you want to walk him through the next scene? I was, I was a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I guess we, when, we, when, when things get a little hairy. Yeah. yeah. It's um, scary out here. All right, y'all. So this list is done we see mm -hmm. people being put on this bus right to ship them to the airport to, to give them safe passage to america it's all these and again to your point it's all these people who are the the generals like half peeps but like you said they're not the in crowd almost they're not right. the general's men so to speak it's more like just paper pushers or people who might be you know know what they're doing Right. So you have all these people on this bus. You have like the mother, the 80 year old mother of one guy who she's like, wait a minute, you left your son or you left your child <laughs> and you're here. taking me like, yeah. what is wrong with you? Crazy. So obviously there is some, some red flags there, but it's like a cattle call. These people are being put on these, on this, on these buses uh, and just to get them to America and the general we find out kind of gets not double cross, but we're, we're, we're shown that Claude didn't really come through on, on one of his pledges because the general had mentioned, Hey, who are these people? You know, I don't know any of these people. So it made me wonder if Claude was cutting deals with other people to be like, yeah, we're just going to put all of y'all on one bus too yeah. bad. So sad for you. Basically, yeah. Um, you're going to have to deal with it. No first class. They said no first class treatment. So the general is just somebody. He's just a dude, right? Mm -hmm. So they go to to get on these these planes, these choppers, what have you. Okay, so you know you know how Cam was referencing that the the shells were about two hundred kilometers away. They're no longer two hundred kilometers away. Holy They're two God. one <laughs> here kilometers away. Yeah, they are here at the moment. So for me to see that bombs blasting explosions planes being shot down you know people obviously dying the bus got shot flipped over yeah. on its side yeah we saw a whole bunch of people like pretty much die uh and then all hell breaks loose people are being bombed explosions are happening you're not seeing anything too gory but you're getting the point that this right is oh yeah, yeah yeah it's all like donkey Kong. you know what i mean so mm -hmm. Wow, just the amount of napalm, gunfire, boom, bang, pow, you know, just yeah. if you're not used to this kind of stuff. So seeing it pop out like this was amazing because explosions here, explosions there, people being shot now, and you get a sense of the, the, the need to speed it up. Like, let's go. Yeah. Right? But yeah. Bond has his family yeah. so the captain is worried about bond because mm -hmm. that's his blood brother and like i want to make sure they get on because right. he still has some i think to me he has some hope that he'll get bond on this plane but he'll wind up being stranded and he'd yeah. be okay He's with stuck, that. right right exactly like that, yeah. that that may not have been what was what was thought originally but that's what i thought like oh right. okay he still wants to get caught so he can stay right. home bro when i saw that bond's wife and baby we don't see the baby but we see the wife yeah ran through baby, skewers, baby. whatever you want to say oh, big old laceration dead and <sighs> what i thought was a really good acting scene was bond's actor in shock yeah he was like he frozen was Literally, it wasn't like, yeah. oh, you know, oh, I just saw my family die. Let me go run on this plane. It was yeah, no, no, no. shock, muttering yeah. to himself, you know, just can't move. And the captain's just trying to like get him. And everybody on the fucking the plane is like, yo, we're gonna leave you. 
Because even the general is like, yo, I can't leave like, my Come dude. on, get on. I'm like, damn, he really like you. Like, he really like you, bro. Like, he generally the usually like. The <laughs> general loves this kid. Like, yeah. He loves this kid like he's his yeah. own son. Right. So, again, as the season goes on, we're going to see a lot more of these relationship dynamics. But this is a war style. I, I don't want to call it film, but it's like. It's it's a war series disguised as cloak and dagger espionage. Like it's all facets, right? Yep. Yep. So us being able to see the violence, even though like it's like you said, PG 13 violence, but we know what's happening. We're not dumb. Yeah. People are for dying. Sure. Bond, you know, is 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 traumatized. And then we flash after all this, we flash back, uh, flash forward to the prison camp. So we're led to believe, and I don't, I don't correct me if this was explained, uh, but he's a POW, right? right? But is it by his own people? Did he let himself get captured? Do we know this at this point? For, for me, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's what it is, but I feel like, I don't know. I have several different theories about it. So I have a theory. I mean, I haven't seen any other episodes, but Go this ahead, one. The theory. But for me, my theory is that um he essentially is betrayed by his own people right because yep. they feel like at this point they can't trust him probably because uh, he he don't know the truth from a lie just like in the beginning of this first scene where he was like okay i know i told you the first time it was emmanuel but it was actually death was but it's like why would you lie like yes. why why you know like maybe he can't help himself maybe he just lies habitually you know like free flowing just like habitual line know, stepper mm -hmm. habitual line so for me, I was just like, you know what? This is probably his own people. You know, maybe something happened. He decided to return back, and this is where we are now. But I, I, I love how this this story is kind of you know un unraveling, and they definitely take their time in these episodes to kind of like let it formulate and let it blossom and kind of let the story grow. You know, you kind of dive in deep with these characters, and then boom, they they shake it up towards the end. You know. Mm -hmm. um, what, what did you what do you think about this episode so far though? I mean, like just this one. I mean the series overall so far. Um, I I don't know what to think, and I think that's yeah. the point. We don't yeah. know what to think. We're supposed to it was sort of like Tokyo Vice. Remember how right. when we thought it was a slow buildup and it was almost a little too slow for us? Yeah. This one isn't slow. No, this one all. already has you thinking within the first 10 minutes of the first episode. Right. So my brain's already working. Yeah. And look, we're already we're formulating conspiracy theories already. I know after the first one episode. episode. <laughs> Whether or not that don't happen. Acting, I'm thinking he's gonna be a triple agent, you know, at some point. Right. Like, oh, like right. he's in it. Hear me out. Now you mentioned mm -hmm. your yeah, your go, ahead, go, ahead, go, go, go. You're your theory now. I think, and I could be wrong, I mm -hmm. think the captain is gonna betray whoever the most higher up person is to save mom. So him, right. he's really working for Mon, right. not the higher up, like would be the general. Like maybe the maybe Mon is screwing over his version of the general, right? On his so side, so they can do some shenanigans. Like because you don't see the Blood Brothers scene just because as a throwaway scene. It right. has to mean something. Like right. okay, they did the Blood Brothers thing, and one of their family members died. Then why would you show that scene that takes the impetus out of it? So right. my conspiracy brain is over here thinking and they're, and they're, they're both listed. Both actors are listed as mains this season. So right, we're yeah. not done with Bon and Mon. Yeah. They'll be back. I just want to see how back. that relationship, those three play out because I'm thinking, yo, Bon finds out that the captain and Mon, and we don't even know if that's their real names, right? Because yeah, the captain I mean, is just honestly, the captain. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I really want to know. Imagine, and again, this is me th thinking out loud. Imagine if Bond has been in on it the whole time as the sleeper agent for both parties. That'd be crazy. And he's you, gonna betray everybody at the end. You know what? It just brought something to my mind. Now I'm thinking, like, man, this character of Bond was so um He's the he's so the hopeful, like, right? Oh, so so happy, so hopeful. You know what I'm saying of what the future is gonna bring. Can you imagine how dark he's gonna get? Because the people that bombed him were the North, right? Essentially, yeah. who his blood brother is working for secretly. 
Yes. So once he finds out what's going on, he yep. somebody he ain't gonna that. be happy. Somebody so, that. So. <laughs> so the first episode, and we can, we can get out of here after this. Yeah, just so many twists and turns for one episode. Like, there's a thing in wrestling called swerves, right? Mm -hmm. Where where you see where something happens where you don't think it's coming, and you get swerved by whatever's going on in the ring, and you're shocked right. and appalled and what have you. Because this whole show is predicated, and it's based on a novel, which I have not read. This just seems like swerve a Everybody's right. going to get swerved at some point in this series. And I'm looking forward to how uh, we said who got Pauline in it. I want to see who gets swerved throughout this entire show. Yeah, who's going to get betrayed? Way, who's going to get got? Now I'm interested. Let's go, sympathizer. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I like I like swerve. We're going to be using that all, all series. Um but yeah, thank you guys at home for checking us out for our spoiler recap of The Sympathizer out on Max, 9 p.m. on April 14th. Um, if you guys like content like this and want to see more content that we put out just like this and more reviews, make sure you check us out at BigGoldBeltMedia.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you'll be the first one to know about new content that we drop on a week-to-week -week basis. Until next time, peace. Peace.